morning, everyone. So uh, I work uh, as a chief physicist in the Neurological Survey of Brazil, and I'm going to present uh, some part of the results of my PhD thesis I'm doing uh, in the University of Sao Paulo in collaboration with the, in the HEG group in all those university with Professor Adben and others here. So this is the outline of my presentation, uh, introduction and objectives. I, I will give a few words about the mechanism of the IP effect in TN data, then the uh, ordinary <laughs> approach to deal with this problem, uh, the COCO model, and then the reparameterization re of this COCO model we are using, calling the maximum phase angle, uh, MPA for short, and also uh, a robust inversion scheme using the MPA, and a synthetic example uh, using this, uh, and then the, the, uh, the core of my presentation, the results in Brazil, in the, the area called Quadrilatero Ferrifero, it's a mining district uh, for gold and iron. Uh, going from a local uh, scale study in a mega mine to a regional scale study in a hostile grand area. And then the conclusion, the discussion. So the motivation of this work is the idea that the IP effect in airborne uh, EM <coughs> data, it's uh, promising to, to, to map uh, charitability information in large areas uh, in a faster and, and cheaper way compared to the ground service we are used to use. Um, in our results, we observed that it could help to achieve a, a better uh, resistivity model. Uh, so it help, which helps way better our interpretation. Uh, uh, going from the local uh, study, study anomalies uh, in the Lamego mine here to large scale surveys. Uh, the focus is mineral exploration and ge geological mapping here. And also, the discussion using the robust inversion scheme proposed in this paper from Lin et al. We, we published in last year. So, a uh, very basic idea about the mechanism of the IP effect here. So, let's imagine we have here our uh, transmitter loop on the surface, and there is a, a polarizable substratum over here. And I'm going to plot what happens here, the BDT curve here. Uh, in the beginning, before the turning on of uh, our transmitter loop, uh, everything is in a equilibrium state, all the charges here. But when you turn on and tu immediately start to turning off, you, uh, the variation of the primary field inducing the in, in, uh, uh, polarization process can start inside this polar uh, polarizable medium here. And after the total turn in, turning off of the transmitter loop, as uh, Dennis said in his presentation, uh, the secondary field, the transient currents, start, continue the polarization process in the medium uh, that may reach a maximum polarization. Uh, and we, we start to measure it uh, after the turning off. If it, we didn't have the, this polarization uh, medium here, we would expect a straight line like this to, uh, in our measurements. But when we do have this polarizable uh, object, the body over here, we observe this uh, steep uh, decays like this, uh, way different from the, the, the straight line we would expect without it. And uh, after the total uh, diffusion process, uh, when the diffusion process is complete, or in other words, when it's weak enough uh, to not uh, keep the polarization process anymore, the, the chargers starts, starts to discharge and it creates a, a, another transient in an opposite direction. So that we may observe here negative values uh, associated with this uh, discharging process, uh, just creating a, a, a transient field in the opposite direction of the, the secondary uh, field generated by the turning off of, of the loop. So this the general idea about it, I'm not focusing in which type of uh, IP effect we are dealing with, but just to, to, to understand it in how it looks like in, in real data. So this is the flight line. Uh, here we start to observe the steep decays over here and, until we got some negatives over here. And if you take a sounding uh, uh, at some point over here, we would observe a decay curve like this, the positive data, steep decay over here, and the negatives will show up at some point. So. The ordinary approach uh, to deal with IP effect is the COCO model. It's uh, 
basically a complex function, uh, frequency dependent complex function for the resistivity, which depends on four parameters. Uh, how zero is the zero uh, current, zero frequency uh, resistivity model, the direct current resistivity, <coughs> and zero here is the intrinsic chargeability. Tau ho is the time decay constant or relaxation time constant, and C is the uh, parameter that dictates how dependent of the frequency is your is the resistivity model. Uh, omega here is the the, the angular frequency. Um, uh, I'm going to call the resistivity coco model as RCC for now on. And in our work, uh, we are using this uh, different approach, this new approach to, to deal with this problem. Uh, instead to use the chartability here in the ordinary coco model, we are using the maximum phase value of the, ma the phase spectra here. So uh, we are looking for this value over here in inversions. And of course, when we do that, we have to change also the, the relaxation time and take the, the one associated with the maximum value here. And they are related uh, through this relation. Uh, the idea to use uh, this approach is discussing this, this paper, Shandaka uh, et al., 2018. Uh, when we use this, uh, we decrease the correlation between the four parameters and we get a, a better uh, model space, a more uh, independent model space, and uh, and of course uh, we can use it. Uh, but, uh, we can have a better interpretation of our results. And yeah, MPA. Uh, and then the robust version scheme we are using in this work. So it's a the robust inversion scheme. Uh, it's a just a five-step workflow. That okay, we start using the MPA approach, then. We define an initial resistivity uh, model, a robust resistivity model. It could be made using a, a very tight uh, a special constraint inversion using only the positive data and the, the ordinary approach, uh, the resistivity only, the non-complex inversion to define your, uh, your background, model background. Then we lock the tau phi associated with the maximum phase and C for the first few interaction, interactions. Um, here we, we use five, but it could vary depending on your problem. Uh, you can decrease or increase this value. Uh, the idea to use is uh, you give direction for the uh, better direction for the, your resistivity and chartability models first. And then uh, we increase the standard deviation uh, in the, around the, 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 the design change, which allows you the uh, better feeding of your data. And then the, the final step, there is a uh, modification in the damping scheme, uh, allowing the, uh, to individual damping uh, for the each parameter, which balances uh, better your uh, multi-parameter uh, model space. So then the synthetic example, uh, we apply the, um, this approach. Uh, it is published already in the in this paper, Lin et al., 2018. But uh, in the paper, uh, we we showed six cases, but in, in this presentation, I'm going to show only two. Uh, this geometric case with the polar conductive body uh, touching the, the the limit of the domain here for two different situations. Uh, the first is a conductive environment, and the second one is the a very resistive environment. So. For the conductive environment, uh, here we we are making a comparison between the MPA approach and the resistivity only, the non-complex uh, resistivity function. Uh, I'm going to call it as R O for now. And we'll, what we observe uh, directly is if we use the resistivity only approach, uh, some weird uh, thing happens in in the bottom of the the conductor, we have the pen lab here because it's a LCI, 1D LCI approach. Uh, and uh, we can uh, barely can define the, the bottom of the conductor over here. But uh, in the MPA, the conductor is well defined over here. And the Femax, the chartable information here, uh, defines quite well the, the polarizable body. And are the same for the other two parameters over here. Uh, for the second case, the 
resistive environment, uh, some, something similar happens here. Uh, the bottom of the conductor is not quite defined in the RO approach, and also the top now. Uh, in MPA, there is some definition about the, the center of the, the, the conductor body, but the phi value defines quite well, especially here, uh, the top and the bottom of, of the, the plasma body. Uh, something similar occurs for uh, C value, not tau here. So this is just to show uh, uh, the potentiality of the MPA approach. And then I will move to the core of my, my results, my presentation, my thesis. Uh, first, we are going to, ah, first let's say some words about the era. We are in Brazil. Um, the, the state is a Minas Gerais state over here in the southeast, the southeast part of the country. It's a south border of the San Francisco Craton. It's an important Craton that we have a lot of uh, uh, mineral districts in, the, in this. And the area is called the Quadrilateral Ferrifero. It's just here. And then we zoom in in this area. This is the simplified geological map. It's a greenstone belt environment. And so the greenstone, it's concentrated in this area over here. And the two areas, the two results I'm going to discuss here is uh, the Lamego mine, the gold mine over here. It's a, our uh, uh, local scale study and the, the regional study. It's a Hossa Grand area. We are defining this in, in the project, in the geological survey, uh, wh where we have a, a lot of uh, structure, stressful, going from uh, south, southeast to the northwest. Uh, and then we have a lot of uh, bonded iron formations and sulfide seminations along these this structures. Uh, the, the data we are using is a, an Aeroton data, AT. Uh, this is data, this map. This is the seventh channel of the DBDT. Uh, this is our, our, the, 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 the errors of the survey. La Mega Mine is over here. And uh, this is the Hossa Grand area. And the trust folds, we, we can see that what it, I'm plotting here is the peaking values of the, the, the conductive anomalies over here and over here. And we can see there is some structural control of the, those anomalies associated with the, the, the structures in this area. So, oh, first, La Mega Mine. Uh, so, La Mega Mine uh, presents a, this uh, a folded structure with the links uh, dipping towards the southeast. Uh, these are the flight lines over the structure of the survey. The, the blue uh, lines here uh, represents the intervals that we managed to invert. And the, the red one uh, represents the intervals that they are, uh, uh, there, there are a lot of coupling, EM couplings happening here because of the mine structures over here. This is a satellite image of the mine. Um, <laughs> And the, the, the gray lines over here uh, represent the, the part of the survey that the uh, signal to noise ratio, ratio was really poor. Uh, do we probably do a very resistive environment in the surroundings. So the, the geology here is uh, summarized by a mafic environment, uh, it's a mafic uh, volcano sedimentary sequence in the, in the surroundings uh, with a mafic units in the center and uh, a carbon schist in the limbs of the fold in the, this uh, dark, uh, I don't know what the color is, but uh, in this part over here. And, and this in, associated with this carbon schist, there are bonded iron formations and the mineralization happens, the sulfide dissemination happens in the contact with, uh, within the bonded iron formations and the, the carbon schist. So we have two, uh, uh, two geological units that might generate the IP effect here. Uh, the, the carbon nasser schist and also the, the sulfide dissemination. And the, the anomaly of the structure, this is the process data, this is the raw data. Uh, the anomaly of the structure, it's for this line line over here, it's associated, it's, uh, it, it shows uh, like this. And if we take a sounding in the center of the structure somewhere over here, uh, we see the steep decays and the negatives showing up like this, and another sounding uh, outside of the structure somewhere over here. It doesn't uh, appear to, to with the steep decay negatives, and you know, the noise level is somewhere over here, over here, and outside of the structure, 
we can see that the data is very noisy and we couldn't work. It represents uh, some parts, the parts of the, the gray lines over here. So, but before uh, we inverted the data, we conducted a synthetic study just to try to understand which, what is the, the, the aerotan response for the IP effect in, in, uh, in a place like Lamego. And the model we, we used is the 1D model, uh, a very resistive environment a surrounding, represent the, the mafic units. Uh, in the middle, the carbon acid schist, uh, of, uh, more conductive than the environment here. And we play it a bit with the, the values of uh, Femax, increasing from 10 to up to 500, and see what happens uh, with the data and the, the model. So this is the first case, uh, the 10 mini radians. Uh, this is the K curve. We, we barely can see the, any difference between the, the MPA and the resistivity only version. The MPA is represented in red, and resistivity only is represented in blue. And in the model, the 1D model here, we can see that the black line represents the, the true model, this one. And the blue line represents RO, a resistivity only inversion, the resistivity model, and the MPA is represented in red. So there is almost no difference between them. But when we start to increase the, the Femax for 100 milli radians, uh, we can see a difference in the resistivity on the result here. Uh, the, the conductor became thinner, and when we start to increase the value, it became shallower, while MPA always recovered better the, the position of our conductor. It's the same for 500 here. So it becomes shallower and thinner. So, and the negatives shows up uh, at some point here, and the decay starts to become more steep. The resistivity only uh, inversions here, they, they were conducted uh, using only the positive data and uh, discounting the, the first positive before the, uh, the, set, the last positive before the, the first negative. So this is our, the response we would expect in Lamego. So let's, let's see uh, the results. Uh, here is the same flight line I present in the map, the, the data. This is the same uh, uh, interval I'm present here. Uh, this is the RO result for the resistivity model. This is the MPA result for the uh, resistivity model. Uh, these are boreholes here over here. And in the RO, RO result, we can see here uh, that there is this uh, resistive uh, uh, shallow layer over here. And the, in the borehole uh, integration here, there's a um, yellow intervals. They represent the mafic schists. Um, and when you compare here with the MPA result here, uh, we can see that the, there's a, the units, the resistive units, agree quite better uh, with the position of this shift. And uh, also in the uh, resistive only there are there's a very resistive uh, artifacts going up like this. But what I want to show the the very nice result to show is the uh, Femax result, uh, which we map it a polar body over here, and the carbon associates in the boreholes uh, legend are represented by the there's a light and dark gray over here, here, and here. Uh, and we can see that the polar body recovered uh, by MPA agrees quite better, quite well with, with the, the position of this uh, carbon associates that it is polar. We know from the petrophysical data uh, in the mine. And this is nice to show the, it recovers the, the structural result going deep, deep in towards the salties over, over here. So uh, then uh, if you take a sounding uh, in this area uh, where we have more uh, carbon associates over here and the IP effect is stronger, this is the, how the sound, sounding looks like. So we have the Steve decay over here, the MPA in red again, and RO in blue, and the negative showing up here. Again, uh, the MPA model is the red one, and the, the receivity only is the, the blue, the, the, these two blue models here. It's a, a smooth model and a few layer model. Uh, we, can, we see a, a similar behavior compared to our synthetic study. So that's what we, would exp what we expected happened in the, in the inversion here. And then 
uh, the fee values, they are really high. And then when we were working, there's a, okay, we have to find anywhere uh, values. Uh, these values are going up to 400, 500. Uh, we have to find anywhere uh, lithologies uh, similar to these that may present uh, uh, val fee values like this, maximum values like this. And we found a USGS report, very old report, that they conducted a petrophysical study for uh, similar lithologies in a greenstone belt in Saudi Arabia. And uh, they showed here in the, the this lithology, this carbon associates, is a cur curve uh, B and the B and A here over here. It presents, uh, sorry, D over here. It presents uh, the maximum value around 400, between 400 and 500 over here. So it, it, it agrees quite well with our results, uh, the values we, we got in Lamigo. And this is a quick animation integrating all the, 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 the sections inverted. So I, I will forward a bit because of the time. Um, what I'm going to show it's the fee uh, max uh, model. I will move a bit along the structure. So we can see the polarizable body dipping toward to southeast over here. And then there is a blank because of the coupled data, and it comes again. And then I'm going to show now uh, the, the clipping of the, this polarizable body over here. It's a clipping of uh, greater than, uh, values greater than uh, 150 uh, millirenes. The gray surface is the DOI. Uh, so the, uh, the, the polarizable body is always above the UI over here. And then I integrated with a previous uh, sheet uh, conductive modeling I did a couple of years ago using uh, all the structural uh, information uh, we got in, that, in, in this mind. There is a paper a from a geologist that mapped all the structure of La Mega Mine, and I use this to, to, to do this uh, blue plate over here, and it agrees quite well, the structural behavior agrees quite well with the polarizable body recovered by MPA. And then, uh, just a curiosity, uh, we also have the magnetic data. This is the dipole anomaly over the mine, and we believe that the, the, the magnetic units here are associated with the mafic units. And we expect the mafia units to work as an envelope for the uh, the carbon associates. And this is this is what we are seeing in our model. The magnetic units they, they work like an envelope for the polarizable body over here. So let's see. Yeah. So these results are nice to show because. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it seems that everything is working as we expected for this structure. So this is the, our local uh, local study uh, case. Then we move to uh, a regional scale uh, in Hossagland area. Uh, this is the map showing the structures, the, the thrust fault going from southeast. Uh, this is the magnetic data over this area. Uh, these this, uh, red uh, thin units over here are the bonded iron formations, and they are very magnetic in this case. Not in, it's not like the case in Lamego. The beefs are not magnetic in Lamego, but here they are. Uh, and we can see the structural control of this, uh, uh, this uh, beef's body. And this is the, the, this, flight, this flight line interval I'm showing here now for the aeroton data. This is a process data. We can see a couple of negatives coming up. I'm going to zoom in this area now. And we see the negatives quite clear here. And if we take a couple of soundings, it, they look like this. The noise level is somewhere here. But we have the negatives and the CP decays happening here, suggesting the IP effect uh, in this area. And inverting it uh, uh, for the same, same idea, this is a resistivity only approach, the MPA approach. Uh, there's, they, they are the resistivity sections. So in the resistivity only approach, uh, we can see, okay, there are some uh, very resistive units mapped here, but when we compare with MPA, it looks like 
smoother and better defined. Uh, I would say more ge represents better the geology here. Uh, it might represent the mafic environment again. Uh, and when we take a look here in the go. Huh? Oh, nope, sorry. It it came. You need to wrap up soon. Yeah. When you take a look in the Femax Valley, uh, it marked these are polaris bow units, shallow polaris bow units over here that might represent the, the, the soil the, uh, generated by the alteration uh, of these rocks. It's a very old terrain, the greenstone, but Archean greenstone belt. And we also have these uh, polaris bow bodies coming up like this. And when we compare the, 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 the residuals, we can see that MPA got a lower residuals between one and two in the majority over here. Uh, we don't have boreholes in this area, uh, like in Lamego, but when we integrate this with the geological map, I'm going, it's another animation, I will forward a bit. So these are the, 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 the beef units over here, and we have some polarizable units happening uh, associated with the position of the, those beef units here. I would try to rotate in 3Ds and be tough to do that. <laughs> but when I clip the bodies, we got a better view. And the, the position of the polarizable bodies, they agree with the, the structural behavior of the, those beefs, uh, where we, I would expect the sulfide dissemination or maybe the position of the carbon associates here. So. This is the, uh, the, the final result of it, and this is my conclusions in this work. Okay, we are seeing that IP effect plays an important role to define the resistivity model here. Uh, even when we don't have the negatives, because we had negatives in some parts and, uh, of the survey, but there are other parts without the negatives, but we, we, with the steep decays. Uh, if you don't consider it, uh, our resistivity models, they, they seem not to agree with the, the lithological models we have for that era. Uh, a priori information is very important, like in Lamego case, we had uh, petrophysical data, borehole data. And uh, the question I, I have is, and I also answered, uh, should we start to use as a, a default, to, should we start to invert uh, AMIP as a default tool for geological mapping? In our case, I think the conclusion, yes, uh, we should. We, we have to, maybe we have to try to use it as a default too. So uh, that's it. Uh, these are the references. And thank you.